Good afternoon. Let's try one more time. Good afternoon. All right, that's better. How many of you all are undergrads? How many people are graduate students? All right, so I got a tremendous number. How many of you all are actually already in some kind of leadership position? All right. Fantastic. Well, my name is Howard Adams, and I'm the facilitator for this session. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, but you have my bio, and so that's why we didn't go through some kind of formal introduction. You notice that I started right at 1.30. A leader should be able to tell time. All right? So let me say that to you again. A leader should be able to tell what? Time. time. And so if you can't tell time, you can't lead. If you can't tell time, you can't what? Lead. So from here on out, those of you who raised your hand up and say you were a leader, never wait on people who are coming and penalize people who are already there. We, 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 we do that. We'll say, well, let's wait 10 minutes. And so people know you're going to wait 10 minutes so they don't come on time. So you should start the meeting on time and put the important things right up front on the agenda. If you're going to discuss the budget, make it number one so that they missed it. They didn't even have a vote on it. You got me? I know you didn't hear that. Put the important stuff what? Up front. And make people come on what? Time. Run the meeting on what? Time. Get it over on what? Time. We have meetings that just drag on for two or three hours. Shouldn't take that long to have a meeting. But the first thing, we lose 15 minutes because we're not on time. So we started on time. So let's just get that out of the way. I'm a career coach. And I do three things in that. So let me tell you about that. Number one, I do leadership development. And I do that on a lot of kind of basis. I help organizations set up mentoring programs. And so I coach people about mentoring. I, I consult on mentoring and that kind of stuff. I, I consult on academic success. I mean, how do, you ha how do you have the kind of success that you want? And then the sort of the fourth thing that I do is I've been, for the last 30 years almost, I've been talking about graduate education. So those of you who are undergrads, if you come to talk to me, I'm going to force you to go get a PhD. Everybody ought to have one. Everybody. Everybody in this room. Basically, we just don't have enough people going on. And so we settle for less than. And we become very unhappy about it. The work life is 40 years. And so if you leave with a bachelor's degree, you're going to work approximately 40 years, if you're lucky. And you might even work longer than that. If you go get a PhD, it's about 35 years. So you can decide, do I want to give up five years and go get a PhD and then work with a PhD, have a, have a career with a PhD, or do I want to stick with a bachelor's? OK, I've worked with a PhD. It made all the difference. My salary has just mushroomed. I was always in charge. I didn't have to ask somebody, could I do something? Because I have a Ph. what? D. The answer is yes, I can do it. All right? We're going to talk about leadership. Well, we're going to talk about performance leadership. How do you get work done through others? You're not going to do it. <laughs> you're going to help other people do what they are supposed to what? Do. So even if you're the president, you shouldn't have to set up the room. You shouldn't have to do everything. You should influence other people to what? To do it. And leaders don't do that. They're very disappointed because they run around like a chicken with their head cut off, doing everything that other people ought to be doing. And then at the end, you have to even include their name in it like they did it. So they ought to do what they are supposed to what? Do. If you say you're a committed chair, you ought to chair the what? Committee and come with a report to the meeting to tell what you what? Did. We're going to talk about. So the first thing I want you to think about is leadership is about task performance leadership. Getting work done through what? Others. All right. I'm just setting up what we're going to do. The other thing we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about you and the presence you bring to that. When I say you, you as the leader, the presence that you bring to leadership. Once you put your neck out there, you ought to act like a what? You ought to look like a what? You ought to smell like a what? Leader. So when I come on campus and see you all, 
I, I, I'll be introduced to the president of the senior class, and he or she looks worse than the freshmen do. So we're going to talk about your presence as a what? Leader. And how you bring that. And then lastly, we're going to do some things around strategy, OK? I talk fast. So if I get to going too fast, stop me. We got a lot of stuff to cover. Now, we are going to talk about surviving and thriving and succeeding. And then lastly, excelling. Leadership ought to be about excellence. It ought to be about being the best. And so our chapter ought to be the what? Best. It ought to be the best one on campus. It ought to be the best one in the region. It ought to be the best one in all of the biomedical <laughs> engineering societies. Of all of the societies, our chapter is the what? Best. You can't, I, I don't hear you all saying that. You say, almost say it like you're scared. Our chapter is the what? Best. best. We wouldn't do it if it wasn't going to be what? All right, there you go. We want it to be good. And so we're going to talk about how do you do that? How do we have excellence in the kind of stuff that we do? Now, perf excellence performance. Excellent performance. I want to perform as a leader. I want to perform as a leader. Excellent. In all areas, a commitment to doing one's very best every time, not sometime. Every what? Time. So when I go to class, I might not get all A's. But I gave it my very what? Best. Get what, guess what you all will do? You'll go in class and sometimes say, well, I, I, I'm just going to let it slide. You can't do that. You can't even start off thinking that you're going to let it what? Slide. You have to give it your very what? Best. Now, your best is good enough. And I know sometimes when you look at people, you'll think to them and say, well, what does that mean? I mean, you know, hey, as a freshman, I got a, I got a C in freshman chemistry. I don't, I, and I say that in the audience, and people look at me like real shocked. You won't believe this. That's the best grade I ever got in my life. That C was a hard C. But most people who were taking freshman chemistry did what? They dropped it. They failed it. And what did I do? I got a what? Say to yourself, what you have to say to yourself, though, now that I got my wings on me, that's the last C I'm going to get in chemistry. Never again. Never what? Again, but that was a good what? See, because I gave it the very best that I what? Had. I was way behind. I'd had a bad undergraduate chemistry class. We didn't have any equipment. I went to a rural high school. People had had advanced chemistry. They were way ahead of me. I go into class and they start asking questions. I don't even know what the question is. I don't mean the answer. I don't even know what they're talking about. And in that environment, I got a what? C very best grade that I ever had in my life. So my best was good what? Enough. But your performance has to be that. You got me? We're not talking about leadership yet. We're just talking about performance. Your performance has to, you have to give it your very, you can't have no regrets. You don't want to look back on this and say, oh, I wish I had done this differently. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Now, when we look at leadership, I want you to look at the word. That's a, it's, it's, a, it's three words in there. Lead, leader, leader what? Ship. Lead, showing the way, guiding somebody, pointing the direction that people ought to go in. It's, it's about everything. It's, a, it's influencing things. It's influencing behavior. It's influencing habits. It's influencing somebody. You're going to be managers if you go out there and go to work. You, you want to be a manager. You're going you, to have a chance to be the vice president. You're gonna, if you went to the lunch and you heard two ladies sitting up there, you know, the, there's a dean, there's a, an endowed chair on that, sta on that stage today. They are leaders. I mean, they are leaders in a lot of things. And if you read their biogs, they've done all kinds of stuff. But when they say they are leaders, they are influencing other people. And that's what leadership is all about. As the chapter person, you were influencing other people to get the work what? Done. All right. And so we look at that. Leader is the guide. That, that's what you do. You guide. And so as a manager, I have managed people. I, I made vice president of the university when I was 33. So I've been a leader a long time. But I always knew I was going to be a leader. When I'm sitting where you are sitting, way before that time, I knew I wanted to be a leader. Guess how I knew? Because my father was in charge of the house. 
and I didn't like it. <laughs> I don't mean I hated him. I loved him, but, but I didn't like him because he was what? He was in charge. Guess what I mean when I say that? The car was his. You know how you, you the guys know about that, but you, you all got your own car. I didn't have mine. So I got to go ask him, Daddy, can I use the what? Car. Guess what he said? No. no. And so you say, are you going to use it? He said, no. I'm not going no place. Well, why can't I? I don't want my car to go no place. That was the dumbest thing I'd ever heard. <laughs> He's not going to use the car. He won't let me use it. So I had to say at that point, I'm going to get my own what? Car. I'm going to become where I'm in what? I'm in, I'm in the seat. I'm in the, it's my car. I am in charge. And so for my, for my whole life, I knew the best way to be was to be in what? Charge. And so I hear you all. You all come to my table, and guess what you say to me? When I ask you what you're going to do, you say, well, I hope, which means you, you, you're not going to do it. <laughs> I, I hope they let me know. You have to say, I am going to what? I'm going to do it. I am going to do this. I'm going to get my own what? Car. I'm going to have my own what? Money. <laughs> my own house. I'm not going to have to ask somebody, can I do this? And so when we talk about a leader, then that's what, you, that's what we're talking about. You have to get where you feel it in you. And so we, we're going to come back to that. And then leadership is just a position itself. I'm president of the club. I'm vice president. I'm secretary, whatever it is I am. So that's what that word means. Now, what does it require? First of all, just a mindset. A mindset that I want to be in charge. A mindset that I want to do excellent stuff. A mindset that I want to make this club the very what? Best. That I want to be president of the company, if you, if you will. I want to be the vice president. I, I, never, I laugh. The reason I wanted to be a vice president of the university, I didn't like the way they ran things when I was a student. I was a student leader. You know how you go as a student leader. You go, why are they doing it that way? And I thought to myself, I should go do it myself. And so I rose up through the ranks in a hurry and became vice pre president. And then I was in charge. And I could do it what? My way. So I was vice president at a time when the women's budget wasn't straight in athletics because the men got all the money. I became vice president. I said, we're not going to do that any what? More. People got mad. Well, you can get mad, but my vote counts 100% because I'm VP. <laughs> and we changed the budget. Certain organizations got more money than other organizations, and all the students put their money in. I couldn't figure out why that was being done. Why, why do we favor one organization over another when all students are paying student activity what? Fees. It ought to be fair. We're going to have a budget hearing. You're going to have to come in here and justify why you're getting your what? Money. You might still get more than somebody else, but it ought to be on some justification, not just because we like you better than we do some other people. You understand what I'm trying to say? So leaders ought to be responsible for something. And so as a, as a president, you ought to start practicing that now on how to do that. And so that, first of all, the courage to be different. <laughs> I laughed because I told you I was 33. And the faculty would even laugh at me and say, we ain't never met nobody like you. I was different. I'd ask hard questions. Why are we doing it that way? But I'm a VP. I was the youngest one, yes. But that didn't have anything to do with anything. In fact, all the other vice presidents were at least 20 years older than I was. All of them. And so most people in my shoes would have sort of sneaked in, like, you know, I'm so glad to be. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm supposed to be here. Always praying to what? Be, not going anywhere. So get what? Used to it. And that's what leadership ought to be about. Commit your time on task. What is it that we ought to be accomplishing? What is it that we, what's on the agenda? And how do we move from where we are now to where we want to what? To be sometime in the future. We'll come back to that question. How do we move from where we are to where we want to be? And so you have to ask that question when you become the leader. This chapter has has this mission. And, and the mission ought to be spelled out in some particular kind of things we're going to do. I don't want to tell you what it is, if, whether it's going to be a service project or whatever it is we're going to do, but this is what we said we are going to what? Do. What are the tasks that ought to be involved in getting that done? To have a homecoming float. Whatever it is. 
we ought to name that task and then figure out how to accomplish it. You got me? And so that's why we started off by saying leadership is all about task performance leadership, getting things done. Put your energy where it counts. That's a, that's a big one. I talk about that on a lot of times. I talk about that when, when I talk to you all about academics because I find out that you're working on a PhD, but you're not putting the, your time in the right place. You're putting it someplace else. You try, you, you're a senior, but you're not, you're not putting your time to do the kind of things that a senior ought to be what? Do, you're still doing freshman things. In fact, when I was a, when I, by the time I was a senior in, in undergrad, the freshmen thought I was a faculty member. There was that much distance between us. So, are you putting the energy where it counts? And then do you, do you have it? Do you allow yourself to be tired? I talk to PhD students and the first the thing they want to know is, well, how do you prevent from being burned out? A doctoral student can't be burned out. You don't have time to be what? You don't have time. A senior who's trying to get a senior project finished doesn't have time to be what? Burned out. <laughs> I need a senior what? Project, because I plan to march and mother's already told everybody I'm graduating. So I can't go home and tell people I'm not going to finish. If you're seniors, you know your mother already told that. She done told the whole neighborhood. And if you're an engineer, she, that's even worse. She, she'll say, my child, you know, she's going to brag about that. My child's an engineer. My child graduated as an engineer. And you can't go home and tell her you're not finishing. She won't even let you in the house. I wouldn't either. <laughs> so how am I going to do that? That's what we're talking about. Now, let's look at these essentials here that you have to have to be in that. And, and these are eight things about sort of qualities that you ought to bring to the process. First of all, just openness and openness. You can't be a herder of information. You can't be a herder. You can't be a good faculty member if you're a herder. I'm amazed at how many faculty members lock up everything. They got all the books locked up. I mean, books get old. What is a book worth that's five years old? Nothing. It's outdated. So even if you lose two or three of them, what does it mean? Nothing. And most of the books, somebody gave them to them anyway. Do you know that when I was on the college campus, I had a sign-up sheet on my library in my office that you could just come in, even if I wasn't there, and just sign a book out and be gone. But if you didn't bring my book back, I would kill you. <laughs> if you took my book and you didn't sign it out, I would what? Kill you. And so the word got around. People knew. Make sure you get his books what? Back. I never lost a book. So if you are a hoarder of information, if you don't share, if you don't bring stuff back, so a good leader, that's the first one. You bring your own motive to motivate others. You bring the why. You have to have the why. You bring the motive to the process. Why did I run for president? Why do I go through this? You know how you ask that question? Why did I put myself in this position? You have to have your own what? Why? You have to bring your own motive to that. Strategic thinking. If you don't have that, if you don't pride yourself on the fact that you're a scientist, a science major, that you, anal you have analytical thought process, that you are not afraid of what? Of, of, of computation kind of stuff. You're missing the boat. That's an important one. Strategic thinking. You all should think differently than the sociology, the majors. They all right, but they don't think like you all think. I see you looking at me funny. I used to tease them about that. Uh, the history majors, they fine folk. But they, they don't have to do any lab work. They don't have to write up what? Experiments. They don't have to write up reports. And they don't have to do the kind of critical thinking that you have to do. You have to reward yourself for that. In fact, I got on the sheet. Give yourself a what? Cookie. Give yourself a cookie. I can work problems. <laughs> I'm not afraid of what? Math. Give yourself a cookie for that. 
You all wait around and say, God, I sure wouldn't do all that hard work. Oh, no, 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 no. And so I laughed because my daughter, when she was in eighth grade, wanted to join the choir. Well, she can't sing. She's a fine person, but she can't sing. And so I had to tell her, we don't sing, baby. <laughs> we do math. <laughs> now, you know, can you imagine telling your eighth grader that? And she looked at me like, what? I'm, you, you, Daddy, you crazy. We do what? Math. I, 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 could, I can do math. Your mother can do what? Math. We do what? Math. Can't do no singing. But we can do what? Math. Well, it took a long time for that to sort of settle in where she appreciated it. Today she has a PhD in engineering. She's a full professor of engineering. We do what? Math. Still can't sing. But we do what? Math. So what I'm trying to tell you is, a, as a leader in this room, the leaders in this room, you have analytical thought what? There you go. You got it. And you have to give yourself some credit for that. So you can go in a meeting and cut through to all the stuff that folk are dealing with. Let's just cut to the chase here. Let's get down to what the real thing is here that we ought to be what? Dealing with. That's why people don't like the scientists. I'm serious, they don't. But they always say, what about us? Y'all must be smart. You might not be, don't tell nobody, but just take it anyway. <laughs> Managing relationships. An effective leader has to be able to get along with all kinds of people. It doesn't make any difference who they are. You can move past race. You can get past gender. You can get past, I don't mean, you know, I don't mean you throw it away, but, you, but it, it doesn't mean anything. I sort of shock people because I go in a room to do a presentation, and the first thing I'm telling people, hey, you, you knew I was black, didn't you? It didn't surprise you. You saw it when you walked in the room. When you, all, when you all walked in here and I stood up, what did you see? There's a black guy up there. Now, some of you formed an opinion about that. Well, oh, God, that guy's black. All right. I'm hoping by the time you leave, it has nothing to do with what? Nothing. That you say, God, I went to a seminar today. The guy who presented happened to be what? Black, black but it didn't have nothing to do with nothing. Right? <laughs> so that's what we're talking about. And so the relationship thing, being able to do that with all kinds of people is important. The ability to, to, uh, to confront others without destroying relationships. You're a fine person, but you got bad ideas. I wouldn't start off by telling him he was stupid. No. You understand what I'm trying to say? See the difference in the way I said that? You're a fine person, and we like you a lot, but you got bad what? Ideas. Doesn't have anything to do with you as a person, though. You're a wonderful what? Person. You just, your ideas are poor. Huh? I know, but still, based on what we're trying to do, it doesn't fit what, we, what we're doing. You might have to tell somebody that. We can't get that on the agenda. It doesn't get us any place. No, I know that, but I'm in charge. <laughs> I'm in charge. I'm in charge. Now, I don't, don't use my language to tell him. Don't use my language to tell him, but I could have I told my staff that, and they wouldn't have quit. Okay? But in my office, you, if you go see them, and all of them would work for me again today. They'll laugh and tell you, they gave me a shirt that says, his vote counts how much? 100%. Everybody knew that. That doesn't mean I had to always win, but I can't lose. That's a difference when you're in charge. I don't have to win, but I can't what? Lose. You can't win unless I vote with you. You got me? So when you approach me then, you have to come. I was listening to the discussion today at lunch. And nobody talked about the fact when you approach somebody, you expect to get a no. They treat it like it's almost an automatic what? Yes, it's not true. It's almost an automatic what? No. Guess what? That's what your mother did when you'd go see her to ask her for something. What'd she say? No. Get out of here. And so you had to figure out, how do I ask her so I don't get a what? No. So when you're asking for something, you ought to go to the process thinking that the answer most likely is going to be what? No then I ought to frame it so that I don't get a what? No. If you treat it casually, you're going to get a what? Yes. No. No, you're going to get a no. <laughs> <laughs> if you treat it casually, you're going to get a no. Let's run through these real quick. Stay on top of your emotions. Handle your professionalism. And then always integrity. You know that one. That one is very important. Now, key principles. We're going to talk about rigor, responsibility, and rele relevance. Rigor. You just have to be very prepared. 
And so you have to, you just have to spend some time learning the core principles and practices of being a leader. You got to be prepared. You have to know rules of, 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 of Robert's rules of order. You just have to practice. You have to know something about a budget. <laughs> you have to, you have to practice getting ready for it. You understand what I'm saying? Now you grow into it, but you have to be ready for it. So just the rigor of what it takes, the the rigor of it, the understanding of the principles of leadership is important that you understand that. And so if you're going to be in leadership, if you want to be a manager, if you want to be a full professor, whatever it is, there is a protocol to it. There are certain principles that you've got to observe, and you have to bring those. It flows out of the purpose. What are we trying to do? Why, why does this organization exist? Why does the unit, this unit exist? Why are we teaching this class? Whatever it is you're trying to do. And I'll just bring some of my experiences in here. I, uh, the church that I belong to, and I don't want to bring religion in because that's not, that's not, it's not here and there. But the church that I belong to, we were a small congregation, struggling, struggling congregation. And we never sold it to make it come out to be, why do you come here every day? Why are you here? We never even asked that question. People had never, they just sort of showed up. <laughs> they just sort of showed up. Well, you can't have a church with people just showing up. Because we have, we have, we got the lights to pay for. We, we, we need a building. We, the building was too small for us. We, there were a lot of things we needed to do. And how do we move on? So you have to get in a position where you can have, what's the purpose here? What are we trying to do? What do we want to have here? And so when we really sat down and defined what we wanted this church to be, it was not hard making the case, we can't do it sitting where we're sitting now. We gotta have a new building, we gotta have a bigger budget, people gotta put more money in, and you can't just be dropping in a few coins on Sunday. We need some money. You need to dig down in your pocket and give some what? Some money. Do you know we had a meeting on just that question? What do we want this church to be? What's the purpose? And in order to, and, and I was, I happened to be president of the congregation at the time, and we just sort of spotted people through the congregation to give a, a testimony about that. And when I said testimony, just get up and tell people, what does this church mean to you? And most people who would have done that would have gone and got the big dogs to do it. The, the big dogs will give money. You don't have to convince them necessarily. They can give more, but they'll give money. But it's the little dogs <laughs> that have to strain to give some what? They have to give more than they thought they had the capacity to what? To give. So you have to get little people to tell why they do it. So we had, a, and I'm going to go through this real quick because I'm going to show you how we did it. So we got a young lady in the church who came on Sunday morning, and she ushered, but she never stayed for the service. She was there early. She ushered, and just before the service started, she was gone. And nobody really knew why. I mean, some people probably did. Even as president, I didn't know why she left every Sunday. So when I found out why she left, she went to work. She had to open a store on Sunday morning. And we asked her, would she tell what the church meant for her? Because it must mean something for you to come and do that every Sunday. And she got up and she said, I was in bad shape when I came here. She said, mentally I was destroyed, a lot of blah, 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 blah. And she stood and she started crying. She said, this is the best thing ever happened to me. She said, I don't make, but whatever she said she made, I don't forget, it was a small amount. And she said, when I finish paying my bills, I have $20 left. That's just casual money. She said, you can have all of it, every month. I'll give, you, I'll give you about 20 bucks. That's all I got. If I had more, I'd give you more. She said, but if I had the money, I would pay for the church. And she sat down, and a couple other people got it. Guess what? The rich folks started getting up saying, we don't need, let's put this, let's, be, let's buy us a church. <laughs> I'm serious. And in no time, we bought a what? A church. That would not have happened had we not gone back and asked the question, why do we exist? So I want you all to think about it, those of you who are in these clubs and organizations, why do we have this club? Why do we have it? What do we want to accomplish with it? What should be our outcomes? And how do we get there? All right? What kind of resources do we need to get there? And don't, and don't cut it off ahead of time. If we had gone and tried to put together a budget before we had the purpose, the budget would have been small. And we would have said the reason it's so small is because we couldn't raise the money. But we hadn't made the case for the what? Money. So don't go do that. And we talked about that yesterday. 
Don't go eliminate yourself. You all are looking for jobs, and guess what you say? There's no need to be going there because I'm not going to be able to do it. So you eliminate your what? Yourself. Don't do that. Go make the case for what it is you want to do from here on out. And so have a purpose for doing that. Okay? And I'm going to do two more, and then you can pick my brain in just a minute. Now, let's skip that, but we don't need that. I'm talking too much. Now, and, and my axes are wrong. They stay in the wrong place. I know that now. I didn't see it until just a few minutes ago. Uh, but this, this scenario, the world is in this bottom space down here. The world lets its mouth say that's what everybody else what? Does. And so we fall into the norm. Nobody else does it. Nobody else comes early. Nobody else does it that way. And so we fall into the norm. And that's about 70% of the population on anything you want to think about. They fall in the bottom. And so it becomes a routine. Everybody comes to work the same way every day. They do the same thing. They go to lunch at the same time. That's what everybody what? Else does. That's the norm. What I want to say to this room is you have the potential to be better than that. You have the potential to be better than that. And so I want you to think about that. Am I at my potential now? Am I giving it my very what? Best. Am I functioning at the, at the top of my ability here? And then when you get there, a few people crush on through there. They become what? Exceptional. They just want to see how good they are. They want to see how good they are. That's why I like athletics, although I can't play. I can't dribble nothing, can't catch nothing, can't shoot nothing, can't do nothing. I'm, they call me a physical moron. I can't do none of that stuff. I can do what? Math. math. Hello, can't catch no football, but I can do math. Hello, can calculate where it's going to go, but I can't catch it. <laughs> but when I think about this idea of exceptional, when I think about exceptional, That's that 10 percent. That's that 10 what? Percent. You can put it any way you want it. 10 percent of the population has PhDs, MDs, JDs, that, those kind of degrees up at the top. You can either be in it or you don't have to be. I, I laugh because uh, my wife has a PhD, I have a PhD, and my daughter has one. And sometimes when my daughter's home and the phone rings, they say, Maybe, can, may I speak with Dr. Adams, please? She said, which one do you want? Because <laughs> everybody here, what, what? Got one. And we all do what? Math. math. We do math. <laughs> so you can either fall in the norm. Now, what I want you to think about from here on out, don't let your mouth say that that's good enough until you have given it your very what? So you want to move past the norm. I don't want to even fall in that. No, no, never again. Now, people are going to say you're crazy. There are eight kids in my family. I'm the only one with a PhD. But I, I wanted it. Hey, I wanted to be able to look up there and see Howard G. Adams what? PhD. Sounds good. Looks good on your stuff. <laughs> Looks real good on your stuff. All right? Guess what my family say? you always been different. They think I'm crazy. They'll say something like to me, I don't know why you travel like that all the time, other than my baby sister that she, she fell in love and got married too early. I try to tell her love will keep it. It ain't like a tomato, ladies. It's not like a tomato. You don't have to eat it today. It'll wait till tomorrow. All right? My friend in the back, love will keep. Raise your hand up back there. Love will what? Keep. All right, don't, don't, don't rush into it. All right? <laughs> she... After she'd been with me on a three or four trips, she said, you ain't got no job. You got a what? A vacation. I come to places like this and do work. Next week, I'm going to Anchorage, Alaska. If you've never been there in the wintertime, you want to experience that at least once. And it's not bad to have somebody else pay for it. <laughs> you got what I'm saying? All right. Now. You have to do a self-audit. You have to audit yourself. You have to actually sit down and look at your strengths. Don't start with your weaknesses. 
Never start with your weaknesses because your strengths ought to what? Outweigh your what? If they don't, you're in bad shape anyway. So start with your what? Your strengths. What are my strengths? What do I bring to the process? Okay, math. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> See, that's a good one. Math. Analytical, analytical thinking. Being able to quickly, concisely write something up. You can do that. We learn how to con concisely write something up. That, that's a skill. That's a tremendous what? Skill. You have to write short memos, write, you know, short notes and things. We don't want no dissertation. We want a quick summary of something. You know how to do that now. That's a plus. What are my weaknesses? And I laugh because people were asking me, they ask me that all the time. How do you, when you go on a job interview, they go always ask you that. What are your weaknesses? You have to sort of smile and say, well, I'll say, I got a few, but, you know, I don't think they're that bad. And guess what mine are? Mine is I'm impatient. That's the first weakness I always lay out there. I'm impatient. I'm in a hurry to get it what? Done. They start smiling. They, they like that. Okay? Number two. Number two on my list after I, I got rid of that first one. I don't like excuses. I don't accept excuses from myself. That's a weakness. I don't like excuses. You know how people say, well, it ain't that bad. If you shouldn't have done it, it's what? It's bad. So don't even tell yourself it's not that what? Bad. You know, I ran out of gas one time in my life. Now, I knew I was going to run out of gas. You know how you're just trying to stretch it. I got, got, got a little bit long. Ran out of gas. As soon as that car stopped, what do you say to yourself? This is the dumbest thing I have ever what? Done. I am never going to run out of gas what? That's the end of that. I don't like excuses. So don't do it. Nobody's going to say, well, well, you know, I didn't. I heard it. No, I knew the car would not run on without any what? Yeah. Gas. To run out is what? Dump. I don't like excuses. So you have to be able to, that's what I mean when you say something. So you have to be able to, what are you, what are you, so a weakness doesn't have to be like you wallowing in it. It can, it can be a good thing, really. So even when you go on an interview, don't go give away a whole lot of, the, the, you know, the bad things, you know. No, I don't tell people that. What's the challenges? What's the challenges for us to be good? What's the challenges for us to make, to, to realize our budget, to get this degree, whatever it is you're trying to do, by this church? What's the challenges involved in that as a leader? Okay, we got, we all right. I told you I got a PhD in talking, so they should have given me more time. Uh, now, responsibility. Being accountable, being reliable, and being dependable. Those are words that I want you to think about as, as you sit here, either as a leader or contemplating being a leader. How do I make sure I'm accountable? And then I can hold other people what? Accountable. You have to be accountable first. So how do I, what is it about the position that I'm sitting in that calls for accountability? I can't come to the board meeting as the chairman of the board and say I, I forgot the minutes or I forgot something that I was supposed to bring. I can't do that. I have to make sure that I do that. Uh, I ran the Graduate Engineering and Science Consortium and, and I had a volunteer board. And so I had to anticipate what, my pre what the chairman of my board was going to need at the meeting. I had to, he didn't tell, he hadn't, he, I had to anticipate that so that I was accountable to him. Because his vote counted how much? 100%. His vote, in that case, his vote counts how much? 100%. He can't couldn't, he couldn't lose. You got what I'm saying? Now, what did that mean? He gave my raises. I needed him to vote real high. So you better believe I made him look real what? Good. Those of you who are working on PhDs, you better make your dissertation advisor look real what? Good. Your lab, <laughs> your lab boss look real what? Good. And so these things are things that I want you to think about. How do I demonstrate accountability, reliability, and dependability? Now, we, we can skip that one. No, we don't. We can't skip that. We need to come back to that. Um, the priorities. Priorities are, is important. Um, most of the time, we have too many things on our agenda. And I, I want to make sure you hear me say that. That's why I came back to that. Don't put too many things on the agenda. You don't need to do 
And, 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 and as a leader, when you look at, across the scope of things, you might want to narrow it down and, and, and make them big things that you can then make little things that somebody else has to do. You don't have to spell it out all the time. So for instance, like I ran the Graduate Engineering and Science Consortium, and we only had five goals. And most people were very amazed at that, that we, you know, we had five big goals. Number one, we got to raise money. If we don't raise money, we don't get paid. Well, the staff understood that. If we don't raise money, we don't get what? Paid. paid. And we sort of apologized. So, so the staff just sort of half worked. Oh, no, if we, don't, if, we don't, if we don't get this done, we don't get what? If we do it well, we get extra money. You better believe I didn't have to worry about people laying out. I didn't have to worry about people getting, doing their job. In fact, it was easy to run the place. And you can, I mean, I'm serious, and people still talk about that to this day. Criteria, how do you benchmark performance? We, we got a standard that we're going by. We, get, we got some metrics that we can measure things by. We have some metrics. And so let's, let's just take what I was talking about with, the, with, the, uh, with my office. We need to raise a half a million dollars every year in new money. We need to grow by half a million dollars a year. That was a goal. And I was there 16 years, and we basically did it almost every year. Okay. Now, the growth might mean that you're going to fill up a hole in some place, new program. It could be different kind of things. But we, had, we need to do that. How do you do that? Well, at the end of the year, you either did it or you didn't do it. And so somebody's responsible for that. After you raise the money, we got to have programs to spend it on. And what are those programs that we're going to spend it on? And how do we measure whether we've done it or not? And so that's what you're talking about. What's the outcome expectations then? That's it. The outcomes are these measurable things that we're talking about. And then finally, what are the opportunities that are available? And you're always looking at that. When I come to a conference like this, I hope I never leave when I don't get one consulting job. Before I leave here this time, I would have either expanded something that I'm working on or got something new. And I've done that already. So just in case somebody calls me and tells me they're going to drop me, I don't have to go jump out the window and kill myself. I already got some new stuff coming in. So you, ought, you should have had some reason for coming too. And you can sort of measure, why am I here? And how well did I do on that? And what opportunities are available to me, options after I leave here? And so you want to look at that. All right, uh, let's do these last two. Man managing yourself, OK? Now, this is critical for everything. Everything, not just leadership, everything about you. Everybody sitting in this room. First of all, managing your responsibility. If you have a fellowship, it has requirements to it. If you have a TA, it has what? Right. Requirements to it. If you have a GA, it has what? And so you have some responsibilities, and you should honor those. Number two, manage your attitude. What you going <laughs> to Let me come back to my friend over here. When I tell you that my vote counts 100 percent, how are you going to feel about that? You're not going to be happy. But you're going to manage your attitude with me, aren't you? You have to. You don't have to. But I can I cannot give you your raise. We were just joking over there. <laughs> I laughed. Let me tell you what I mean by that, what I tell somebody that. I had to get on one of my staff people because she was taking some shortcuts. And I, we had told her not to do that anymore, and she still did it. And so I had to tell her, we've not, we're never going to say that to you again. If we catch you doing the shortcuts again, we're going to write you up, and you're going to be fired. Now, you might want to quit before you do that because you might in your head say, I'm not going to do it what? That way. So, and she was getting it to respond. I said, don't respond yet, because you're going to say something nasty and you can't take it back. I didn't, I just looked at you, that's all. <laughs> but I want you to think about it, and then I want you to come back and let me know what you're going to do. So she took a couple of days and she came back, and so she, I was getting ready to go on a trip, and she slipped me a little note, and I didn't want to read it, because I said, this is going to mess my trip up. She, just, she probably called me a whole lot of bad names. <laughs> And when I opened it up to read it, she said, Doc, I'll do it your way. <coughs> she just grew after that. Became very good. When she started working for us, she didn't have an associate degree. Today, she's a nurse. That would not have happened had she not got on board with it. So we have to help people manage their what? Attitude. Manage your image. Manage your performance and your productivity. Manage your time. Manage your, pro manage your own progress. 
You shouldn't have to go ask your professor, how am I doing? You know how you're what? How you're doing. Okay? Now, set goals for excellence, whatever those goals are, to get you where you want to be. Set goals for it. And those goals ought to talk about what's to be done and the rationale for doing it and the time frame to get it done. What is it we're going to do? Why are we doing it? If you can't explain why, it's no good. I mean, you, you go in and ask for some money. One of my first jobs that I got when I was a junior manager, I went and asked for a budget thing, and, the, and, the, uh, and my boss said no. He said, no, we're not going to do that. And, you, and, and he had the right to say what? No. All right? I decided I was going to buck it. I'm going to go to his boss. When you go to his boss, it means either you're going to win or you're going to what? You're going to quit or you're going to get fired, one or the other. So you, you, you're ready to lay it on the table. So I went in to see his boss, and I told him, I said, listen, when I came here, I told you all what I planned to do. And now I know what I want to do and what's doable, and I need to be able to do this, and it's, gonna, it, it, it's a budget requirement. It's a budget requirement. If I don't get the budget, I can't get it what? Done, so I'm going to be a failure anyway. So I came to tell you that e either you're going to give me that budget or I'm going to quit because I can't get my work done without it. This is what he did. He laughed. He said, when I was your age, I didn't ask nobody what I could do. I just went on and did it. Now, what was he saying to me? If you think it's that good, what? Go do it. If you, if you fail, quit. But if, you, if, if it's as good as you said it would be, we'll pay for it. But it better be real what? Good. So I went home to talk to the wife before I did that. <laughs> honey, <laughs> honey, should we do this? So she, well, what you going to do? I said, well, I want to do it. She said, let's do it then. And so we went and did it. And it came out, I mean, it came out good. God, it was good. I made them look real what? Good. I never had to ask for anything again. I never heard anything from my manager about it. I don't, what the, I don't know how they discussed it or nothing. He never said anything to me. It didn't cost me anything because I made him look what? Good. So when you talk about that, you, you better have a very good what? Rationale for doing what you want to do, for taking the position that you are taking. All right? And the last one is self-explanatory. We're going to skip that. Now, this is just a, a summary of everything I talked about, because we, we, we have to have a few minutes to talk. First of all, just develop a plan. So you ought to have a plan for the organization. Doesn't have to be no long, drawn-out thing. It could be a one-pager. You're working on a PhD, you have to have a plan for that. You're working on a dissertation, you've got to have a what? If you're a senior, you got to have a plan for finishing up this bachelor's degree and getting a job. You got to have a plan for it. So have a plan. Number two, it ought to be designed around some goals and objectives and a time frame for doing those, whatever they are. I can't move on until I do something. If you're a junior and you've been dodging a class, <laughs> you got to decide, when am I going to take this class now that I know I absolutely need it? When am I going to settle down and take the GREs? When am I going to sit down and, and take the, the mid, uh, med, uh, MCATs? I couldn't think of it. MCATs. Or whatever it is you got to do. I mean, I got to do this because I can't move on without it. All right? You got to monitor it to see where I am and where am I. And when I say monitor it, put a time frame on it. When am I going to have it done? I need to have this done by next week. I need to have this done in six weeks. I need to have this done at the end of the semester or some time frame. Last one is, keep your skills up to date. Don't go sit down on where, where you are now. Read all of the time. At any given time, I, I, I typically try to read about two papers a day. I still read a newspaper, because so I, I like a newspaper. So I try to read at least two newspapers a day. The first one I read is first thing in the morning. I walk at 5 o'clock every day, every day. I walk at 5 a.m. in the morning out in the open air. I'm 72 years old, and people who see me can't believe it. I don't get tired. I can do this all day, but I walk every day, three miles a day, every day, not some days, and I never wake up telling myself that I don't feel like what? Walking. In order to do what I do and keep my legs feeling good, I have to what? You have to walk. You can't do it otherwise. 
I walk every day. So when I see my friends who went to high school with me, they can't walk. Stomach hanging over their belt. They don't have no hair. I still look good. <laughs> I told my old girlfriend, I saw her. And you know, she, she fell in love with somebody else. Hey, I told you, you could have had all of this, but you can't get it now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you have to decide. <laughs> she, oh, <laughs> she couldn't do math either, huh? <laughs> the wife could do math. All right, that, that, that was one. But she, the wife is pretty too. Don't be discouraged by failure. Let me just end on that. I don't want you to, I don't want you to not attempt something just because you think that you're going to what? Fail. Fail. Don't put failure in front of it all of the time. Now you have to think through it, and you have to give yourself a very good chance to be what? Successful. I mean, don't just go this crazily risking things. Don't risk the kids. Don't risk losing your house to go tear your boss off. No, <laughs> that's stupid. But you want to be able to, you want to be able to not, not do that. Now, over time, if you do it right, most things come out right. If you think about it well, most things come out right. That's the first one. Setbacks are not always permanent either. Didn't come out exactly right the first time. Maybe, maybe you have to admit that I didn't do it quite what? Well. Wasn't nobody's fault. Wasn't anybody's fault. I just didn't do it quite right. And so that's why it didn't come out right. And then the last one is sort of self-explanatory. If, if the ship started rocking, what do you do? Write the thing. Get it back up on course. Get back on course. Don't stay hung up all of the time. Get back on track and move forward uh, the way you want to go. Well, that's the presentation. Oh, that's important. Closing words. Care more than other people think is wise. Your friends are going to tell you you're stupid. They're going to tell you, I, I, don't, I wouldn't do that. So care more than other people do. Risk more than most people think is safe. Stretch it a little bit. Dream more than other people think is practical. Dream more. Expect more than other people think is possible. That's, a, that's powerful. I want you to look at that one hard, because that's good. Care more than others think is wise. Risk more than others think is safe. Dream more than other people think is practical. Expect more than other people think is possible. You can have it. You can have your dream if it's not crazy. But you have to work at it. Let me just end by saying this. This is fun. This is absolute fun. I get a chance to come to conferences like this, sit, <laughs> sit in the exhibit hall, and talk to students and get paid. I get a chance to travel. I get a chance to impact folks. I have, out of 25 black females who are full professors in engineering, six of them are my mentees, six of them. I have five deans of engineering around the country that are mine. I've got senior vice presidents of companies, and I've got the chief executive officer at Xerox. Her name is Ursula Burns, a black female. She's 53 years old. I've known her since she was a freshman. I'm the reason she went to grad school. She didn't know she was good until she met me. She was real good, but she was scared. And I told her, not only are you good, you're going to go to Columbia. She was from New York. You're going to go to Columbia because they don't think you can do it. I want you to go to Columbia, and I want you to just eat them up. I want you to finish yesterday. She was scared to go. I said, oh, no, 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 you're going. Or else I'm going to what? I'm going to kill you. <laughs> and I'll just roll the clock. And she went. She went to Columbia. She got a master's in mechanical engineering from Columbia in eight months. Eight months, she got a master's degree and was gone. She went to work at Xerox, and she got promoted just fast. Boom, 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 boom. By the time she was 35, she was vice president. At, 30, at 41, she was executive vice president. At 49, she was president of Xerox, and at 51, she was chief executive officer, and last year, she was named chairman of the board. She's the top dog there. Wouldn't have happened otherwise. You can do this. You can do this. How do I know? Because I looked in the crystal ball. I don't have that one up there. Oh, it went around. 
It's on my next set of slides. I'm sorry. I thought I had my crystal ball up there. But I looked in the crystal ball and asked myself that question. Could you all do this? We need leadership. We need good leadership. We need leadership that's not afraid. We need leadership that's not nasty. The politics today is very nasty. Very nasty. We don't care about people. We don't care about people. In this country, in this country, there should be nobody who's hungry. We throw away more food than we eat. That's an embarrassment. And we would rather throw it away than to give it to somebody who what? Needs it. Leaders ought to speak to that. We ought to speak to that. Now, I don't mean feel, feeling sorry for somebody who could go find themselves of what? Some food. I'm talking about people who need some help and just can't do nothing for themselves. They should not suffer in this country. We're better than that. But we don't have leaders who, who do that. I'm not talking about how you vote. I don't, I don't care about that. You, you have every right to vote the way you want to what? Vote. But we ought to make the country work. The country is bigger than that. We ought to make the university work. We ought to make our schools what? Work. And they don't because we don't have leaders. And so I'm so delighted that I had a chance to holler at you, to challenge you, to get you to sort of sit up and think about this. You, you, you're going to have an opportunity to be in charge. You ought to grab that and not apologize for it. And you ought to go serve very well because you can do math. You can think. You are analytical. You can write. You are not afraid of people. If we can't get leaders out of this room, we're never going to have any. We're going to continue to have stupid people running the what? The country. And that's bad. Thank you all so very much for your attention. You have a form that you, we would ask you to fill out before you leave. I'm giving another presentation for on transitioning to graduate school at 3 o'clock. Between there and then, I'm free. If you want to come up and talk to me, I'll do that. I'm going to, if you, if you decide, but fill out the form before you leave. Fill out the form. And, and we got microphones if you want to ask a question. If you need to go, go quietly. Otherwise, we're going to break your arm off. All right, thank you all again. Any questions, any comments, go to the mics, and we can talk to each other. If, if not, then you can leave and then, okay, go for the first thing. Okay, so I feel comfortable saying that a lot of us aren't as great of a speaker as you. Okay. So you're going to get leaders out of us for sure, but how do we pass on the leadership to other people in our organizations okay. and around our school? You practice. Practice. Practice speaking. Practice speaking. You get up in the morning and you talk to yourself. <laughs> you walk at 5 o'clock when people won't think you're crazy if you're talking to yourself. You get in front of the mirror and you talk to your what? Self. You talk to yourself. Practice. No, that's a good, I'm so delighted that you asked that. I walk in the morning and I, I do this speech in the morning at 5 o'clock. Walking. I, I practice. I wouldn't be able to speak like this otherwise. I practice speaking. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yes. I really like the line that you said you should do work through others. Okay. How do you handle people that aren't picking up their work? Well, you make the purpose clear and you set everything up and give them a timeline, but they're still just not delivering. They have to step down. They have to step down. The, the, the board would ask them to step down, not just you. You have some discussion about it, and then you bring it up in the meeting and ask them what they're going to do, and they'll say, well, you know, blah, 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 give another excuse. He would say, well, I move that we remove that person. You don't have to do it all the time as a leader. You have somebody else to do it. Ask somebody else to make a motion on it. We need to get that person out of this position. We can't get our work done with them doing that. They have to move on. But don't settle for that. And, 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 and you're practicing it now because the same thing is going to happen to you when you, be, when you become a manager at, at work. You're going to have people who don't do what they're supposed to do. Get rid of them. You give them some alternative, but they got to go. You can't. My staff, let, let me tell you something about funny about that. When I was at Notre Dame, we got to the point where everybody in my office, 13 people, every year qualified for a MERT raise. Every single person. In the university, you can't do that. Somebody's not supposed to get a raise even. You know how they say that. You got to have somebody who don't deserve a You can't work for me if you don't deserve a what? Raise. 
So I had to tell personnel, won't you come over to my office and talk to my staff and ask them about that. And he was shocked. To a person, they would say, oh, no, no, no. You can't work for us. We don't want you in our office if you don't pull your what? Wait, because if you do, we got to do your work. So I didn't have to fire everybody. Everybody else would get you what? Fired, because we got to cover you what? Up. We don't want to do that. So as a leader then of the organization, of the church, of the church group, whatever it is, you have to call them on the copy on that. Now you don't, don't use my voice. I'm, I'm, doing, a, I'm doing a seminar. Don't use my voice and don't use my personality. Use your what? Personality to get it done. But you got to call them on the copy. Don't even allow yourself to get in a position where you allow people to make excuses to you. Bad deal. Okay? Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Adams. That was certainly inspirational and I enjoyed it very much. Um, you were motivated to a leadership position because you didn't like the leaders who were leading you. Okay. Or yes. I know you loved your father, but you didn't like that. <laughs> So what do we do when we're in a situation where we really like the leader who is guiding us and it's very tempting to be comfortable in that situation because they're doing such a good job at leading the group, the organization, okay. the department? Let them become your mentor. <laughs> okay. Pick their brain. I was, I, the, the, the reason I became a vice president so early was because the president was my mentor of the university and he was good. He was very good. He had some people working for him who weren't good. I became vice president and I fired those folks. And you, you won't believe this. He laughed the next time he saw me because one of them was his minister of his church. Howard Adams? He, he used to call me by my whole name. Howard Adams? I heard you done fired my minister. I said, no, sir. I didn't fire him. I challenged him to step it up and he didn't do it. And I told him he either had to quit or he was going to get what? Fired. And what did he do? He quit. The word got out. I had fired him. I didn't. He quit. But no, I didn't mention mentors. You need a mentor. And I'm glad you asked. Stand right there. You need a mentor. And you don't just need anybody. You need a big dog. You need a big what? Dog. That is the way to say it even. You need a big dog, right, in your life. And so what you do is you try to get somebody maybe about at least three or four levels above where you are at, at any given time. So you want somebody bigger than that. If you were a junior faculty member, you want a senior professor. If you were a director in a company, you want a senior vice president as your mentor. You want a big dog in your life, okay? And so pick somebody that you admire then like that and, and have them become your mentor so you can sort of, that's a good model for you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. What's next? Anything? Any other? Yes. Do you want to record this too? He's still recording. Go to the mic. This is going to be a good question, so wait on this one, because he's asking what I should have said. Go. Right. So I'm undergraduate. Okay. Would I pick an upper undergraduate? If I already am an upper undergraduate as my mentor? No, no. You, you would, you would as a, and you say you're a senior or junior? Junior. Junior. Okay. You, you, you might want to have a, a senior as your mentor, but you would want somebody past that level. So if, you, if you're at a major university, you might get a graduate student to be your mentor. But you would definitely have a faculty member as your mentor. Okay? So let me talk about that in my life, in my own life. When I was in high school, I had a good high school teacher who was my mentor, an excellent one. And he gave me good advice. But then I had somebody bigger than he was as a mentor. When I graduated, I didn't need him as much anymore. So you move on to another level and get yourself another mentor. But I didn't kick, I didn't throw him away. So up until he died, I still talked to him all of the time. I didn't necessarily need him anymore, but I, I stayed in touch with him all the time because I wanted him to know what I was doing. So that's what I mean by that. So step it up. Step it up to another level. Okay. So, yes, go find yourself somebody beyond that. Yes. Um, if you, do you recommend, like, working in an industry and trying to get, a, get your grad school paid for from undergrad? That's a way to do it. Do I recommend working and getting the company to pay for it? That's a good way to do it. But graduate school doesn't cost anything if you've got grades. Graduate school is free. It doesn't cost anything if you've got grades. Nobody pays to go. That got grades. Now, if you don't have no grades, you're going to have to pay. But, but if you do well as an undergrad, graduate school is free. I don't know how many of you all knew that, but it doesn't cost anything. Nobody pays. 
I didn't pay, my wife didn't pay, my daughter didn't pay, all my friends, I got a niece, got a PhD, all of us got PhDs. Didn't cost nothing. Didn't cost nothing to go. So all you got to do is get your grades up. Now, but that's a different option. You can use that as an option. So it's a good option. But you don't have to worry about that. If that's, if that's the reason you're asking, you know, yes, that's a good way to do it. But that's not the only way to go in terms of paying for it. Okay? What else? Anything else? You got another question. Okay. Huh? What if you do, oh, sorry. Go ahead. What if you don't want a mentor and feel like you really don't need a mentor? <laughs> don't get one if you don't, <laughs> if you don't want one. Now, he said, what if you, don't, if you don't want a mentor or don't feel like you need one? Don't get one. But you're going to be at a disadvantage for everybody else who got one. Because they get you further than you would get by yourself. They get you further. And they get you there faster than you would get there by yourself. So having a mentor, so you, and, and, and we, we talk about, I'm not stupid. So I'm not going to let everybody else have a mentor and I don't have one. You got me? So you want to have one simply because of that. They get you there faster, they get you further, and they make it easier for you. They open doors that you couldn't get in. All right? One of my big dogs I had just simply because he could pick up the phone and call almost anybody and make something happen for me. I didn't need him for anything else. But when I needed a phone call, made you go see him. I need you to call so-and-so. And he would call. And it made things happen for me. Okay? Y yes, go to the mic. Quickly, quickly, because your friends are trying to figure out why you all keep asking these questions. Um, based on what you just said, how did you get to that kind of relationship where you were able to just call when you needed something only? Okay, you, you get the mentor before you need something. <laughs> you get the mentor before you need the mentor. Now that you know that you need a what? You're going to go find yourself some what? Some mentors. You're going to go find one. And you're going to court them. You have to court mentors. It's a love affair. And it's business. It's both a love affair and what? Business. I like you. Want you to like what? Me. And we're going to turn this into a business proposition. Hear what I'm saying. I like you. And I'm going to get you to what? Like me. And then we're going to do business. You got me? So that's what it is. So what you do then is, in that, in that scenario, you court them before you need them. And so you're always looking for them. You're always looking for them. When you come to a conference like this, somebody that you admire from afar, you want them to be your mentor. You never know when you need something. You need a door open. Or you need somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. So you do that all of the time. Okay? Let's take one more last question. Yes. So in a situation where, for example, you're working on a team, say a very simple example is a team project. Okay. And you have everyone's personality, you know, everybody wants to be a leader. Okay. How do you manage that kind of scenario where everybody is kind of fighting for that role? If that well, if you're in the fight, win. <laughs> That's the first thing. <laughs> what can I say? If you're in the fight, win. Don't get in the fight if you're not going what? Win. win. I, that's, I see you looking at me like that didn't what I expected. <laughs> I'm serious. It, it is kind of what I expected. Okay, right, okay. <laughs> now, uh, that's a good place to be. That's a good, that, that sort of right. allows you to test yourself out against other good people. And that's what life is all about. Life is about all that. As you move along, every time you move, somebody's going to want what you're after. Get used to it. Every time you get ready to get promoted, somebody else is going to want it. And you have to sort of look at them and say, I, I, hate, I hate to tell you this, but you're in trouble. Because <laughs> cable one of us, what? Win, and I got you. It, it, it's, 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 it's business. It's, it's, it isn't like I don't like you. What? You're a fine person, but what? You can't win. Thank you. You have to have that attitude. All right. Go have a good time. Go back to work. Go back to school. Go back wherever it is you come from and, and beat somebody. All right? All right.